First of all, thank you for taking the time to watch this video on HP Service Manager. This video series will cover all of the important things you should know about HP Service Manager 9.40. So let's begin with Section 1, Incident Ticketing and Problem Management. Let me show you how Service Manager facilitates incident management and communication to the business end users. Here we see a service desk analyst taking a call from a business user, Amy Lopez. Amy works in the sales department and she's having issues with her team's SharePoint site. The issue is impacting Amy's ability to do her job. The analyst can also see Amy's ticket history. Just by clicking one button, the service desk analyst can talk to Amy about any issues she has called about in the past and drill into and update any of these records as needed, all without leaving the main screen. Back on the form for the current issue, the analyst logs other necessary details of Amy's issue, including the business service, the type of issue Amy is having, and the impact and urgency of the issue. The impact is a rating of how this issue affects the entire organization, while the urgency reflects how critical the issue is to the business user, Amy Lopez. Once the impact and urgency are filled in, Service Manager then automatically determines the priority code. By default, the priority is an average of the impact and urgency fields. So in this case, with an impact of 4 and an urgency of 2, the resulting priority is 3. Now there are also several other features within Service Manager that make opening an incident easier. First there's the Smart Interaction feature that's part of HP Smart Analytics. Here we can see the analyst opening the same issue, but this time he's just providing the business user's name and a description of the problem. He then clicks the Smart Classification button and lets the system suggest the most likely categories in service. The analyst has the ability to correct any of the fields that were auto-generated, which allows the system to learn and adapt. Clicking Continue opens the full interaction form with the category, business service, contact information, and description all populated. In addition, templates are available on records throughout the system. Templates populate fields on a record with predetermined values. This can help expedite the creation or completion of commonly occurring issues. Now that we have the basic details of the issue recorded, let's see how Service Manager assists with the triage and investigation. First, in the same way we were able to view the business user's ticket history, we can do the same for the business service or affected configuration item. From the same section, we can also visualize the CI to see all of the relationships and other affected services. We can also do a quick knowledge search on the issue Amy is having just by clicking one button. The system automatically takes the text from the ticket and uses that to search other tickets as well as internal and external knowledge. This includes known errors that can provide insight into the user's issue. None of these articles solve Amy's problem, so the analyst escalates the ticket for more assistance. During the escalation process, Service Manager automatically prompts the analyst to see if this issue is the same as some other open tickets. The analyst can change the criteria the system uses to find a match, or even relate the issue to an existing ticket number. This feature effectively removes the guesswork in escalating an issue and improves communication to technical teams regarding the business impact of the issue. The existing issues are similar but not the same, so the analyst can continue to open a new ticket. Once this is complete, Amy Lopez will receive a confirmation email with her ticket number. Service Manager can also provide deep detail for the associated business service and configuration items associated with the issue. For example, first by just clicking on the Find button next to the affected service, we can see more detail for the service. This includes outage information, other tickets open against it, relationships to other CIs, and users and departments who depend on the service. All of this information comes from the HP Universal Configuration Management Database, or CMDB. 
In fact, for additional information, we can click the View in UCMDB Browser button. This will bring up a new tab with additional options. From here, we can see ticket details including the change history, incident and problem tickets, and the current monitoring status. We can also see the business topology, which gives us a graphical picture of what other services or infrastructure this item is connected to. We can also run an impact analysis. This allows us to simulate how a given impact with the service would affect other services or CIs. This information is very useful in trying to understand the current issue and establish criticality. The business service and affected CI also have a strong effect on the routing of the ticket. In this case, the application team was filled in as the assignment group since they are the group on the SharePoint business service. The business service and other factors also dictate what service level agreements may be involved. This directly drives target dates, alerts, and escalations. Incident tasks are also a great way to engage other teams. Several other teams can be involved in addressing the issue and collaborate without reassigning the entire ticket. The main group retains ownership, but effectively gets the assistance they need. Incidents can also be accessed via a mobile device. Here we see a technician looking at her phone and viewing her team's queue. She can update, resolve, and assign tickets as needed. She can even view approvals and change records on her mobile device as well. In terms of notifications, Service Manager can automatically send notifications based on any data change. For example, once the incident is assigned, the business user will receive an email notification that our issue is being worked. However, notifications can also be sent on demand. The analyst will now use the notify function to send an update to Amy and let her know the support team will be paying her a visit. First, depending on how critical the affected service is to the organization or how broad the impact of the issue, the incident record can be escalated to a major incident. After the incident is marked as a major incident, the incident has a major incident review section and the review details field in this section is mandatory in the review phase. There's also the option to escalate the ticket. This reveals an escalation section where other groups can be involved in assisting with the issue. Of course, if service is impaired or disrupted, we will likely need a change ticket to address the issue. Directly from the incident record, it is very easy to open a related change. In the section called Related Records, we simply select the type of relationship we're going to create, in this case, Caused Changes, since we are saying this incident is resulting in a new change, and then click Link New Record. We now select the type of change we want to open, in this case, an emergency. The system automatically copies over key fields from the incident, including the assignment, requester, priority, and configuration item. Once the change is opened, the two records are connected. The parent-child relationship allows you to link multiple incidents that are related in a certain way. For example, a network outage results in multiple similar incidents from different users. You can link these incidents under a parent incident. When we go to relate an incident to a parent, we are prompted based on those potential relationships by business service, title, etc. The benefits of doing this are that the activities that occur to the parent incident are automatically recorded on all child incidents, and you can have the child incidents automatically close when the parent incident is closed. Now on the problem ticket in the related records section, we will select the type of related incidents and then click Link Existing Record. We can then put in an incident number or search for an incident based on any criteria. To relate additional incidents, we just need to repeat this process. All of the relationships then show up in one area where the ticket and relationship types are clearly defined. This is a quick and easy way to show a common association between different types of tickets. This process is even easier with the Smart Analytics feature, Hot Topic Analytics. 
Hot Topic Analytics allows the system to generate a heat map where the size of the box corresponds to the volume of tickets with that issue. In this example, we can see that a lot of incidents relate to remote access and, underneath that, VPN issues. Within this topic, we can further break down these incidents. In the resulting list, we can use the checkboxes to select multiple incidents to work with simultaneously. The Create Problem button creates a problem and populates it with information from those incidents. The incidents that we selected in the Hot Topic map are now displayed in the Related record section of the Problem Record. Switching back to the Hot Topic view, we can further filter incidents by performing a search using keywords. We can also apply search filters to the list of incidents. For example, you may want to see incident trends that relate to a specific service. Service Manager natively supports telephony integration via CTI. This is easily configured and allows the caller's details to pre-populate the ticket. Service Manager also enables communication and collaboration right within its interface. Using the built-in chat, users can initiate discussions based on specific tickets in the system. In this case, we can see an analyst initiate a chat with the team member assigned to the ticket. The system will proactively suggest who should be included in the conversation based on ticket assignment, owner of the business service, and other criteria.